What's up, everybody? My name is Indy. And uh, that guy way right over there, that is Mr. J. Powell. And this is the Indy Game Business Show. Yes. I thought you, I thought you, I thought you lost your uh, voice there for a second because it went quiet. Indy Game Business Show. There we go. <laughs> No, yeah, you're just definitely. having all kinds. See what happens when you update your stuff? You just get all kinds of stuff glitching out, man. Yeah, I, I was just, I'm, I'm in a mood right now because I was just telling Indy I was on a developer site and I was on the phone and I wasn't paying attention and their site said update flash. And then when I did, just everything went to hell. This yes. is live, Gary. This is live. live. It's live and alive and it's Wednesday. Is it? Is it Wednesday? All right, good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's something I don't well, know. It's don't the week know. before GDC. I don't know what it is anymore. You know, it, it's just chaos right now. Uh, no games. We are actually in an arcade. Yeah, we're in an arcade right now. <laughs> Can you hear the games bleep, 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 bleep in the background? No, we both. I actually games. have sound effects of that. It's like, uh, like 1980s arcade, 1990s arcade, 2000 arcade, and it's a background loop uh, of like all the games from the 80s and 90s. You see green outlines. I yeah. didn't update the um, the back end. Don't I'll do forget. that in the meantime. <laughs> right anyway, punch. so uh, we're talking about getting ready for GDC and packs. All the little tips, last minute tricks, nuances, all that kind of good stuff. So have you been to packs before, Indy? Oh yeah, like I went one year I went to every single packs in the United States. Wow. So I've been, yeah, so I went to South, I went to East, I went to uh, West. Or Prime, as it was called, back in the day. And of course, PAX is different than GDC. GDC Very is different. more like business to business, where PAX is like, I'm a fan of this game. And uh, yeah, it's different. But still, there are a lot of similarities. A lot of meetings, within meetings and meetings and meetings. But you don't have to have meetings, you can walk the floor. So, so GDC is more like if you are a game developer looking for a publisher, that's the place you want to be. If you are a publisher looking for games to bring on, that's the place to be. PAX is like if, if you, you're a publisher, PAX is a fantastic place to meet. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because uh, there's a bunch of them. Required for GDC, Red Bull or Monster Energy Drinks. You know... There is actually plenty of well, I don't know at GDC. I know yeah, at PAX, at, at PAX, there's going to be like, like uh, gamer sups and da 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 that you can just go and be like, oh look, they have all the flavors and you can taste it. Oh yeah, casual. <laughs> Good God, dude, do not launch a game during do not GDC. Launch. <laughs> <laughs> don't launch right now or at GDC or afterwards, and then it's like right afterwards it's PAX. So do you want to launch your game right in the middle of PAX? Is that good advice, Jay? Better than launch. Actually, no, I wouldn't do it. it and, and the reason has nothing to do with crowds or attention or any, anything else. It's all about the, the PR and the marketing side of it. You're going to be so drowned out at GDC with everybody's news. And this year, Google's got something big that they're announcing, which is probably a streaming system. So, yeah. Um, but with PAX, you're going to be up against all kinds of other, you know, developers. And, and you know, like Games games for Love says, you're going to get drowned out. I would launch two things. I would, la I would either launch the week after PAX or I would soft launch before PAX. I mean, during PAX, if you just absolutely want to get it out there next week or the week after next. And then wait to do your PR, your press announcements, your social media, all that kind of stuff until the week after PAX. Because if you try to do that sort of stuff in between, you know, during GDC and PAX, it's just going to get... Gone. Yeah, you are going to get drowned in the mix. I mean, already there's... How many games do we see where on Steam? 30,000? Oh, how many games not. are released every day? Um, you know everyone that's first off they're going to PAX and so that means that they got money if they're going to PAX or GDC that means that they've got money to promote things so not only are they going to be like at these uh, cons but they're going to be spending a crap ton of money 
Look at that purple hair. Crap ton of money on promotion as well. And if you're like releasing your indie game and you are a smaller dev studio and you don't have a big budget, you're just gonna get <laughs> squashed for sure. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, PAX is way better for the the consumer side. Or if you're a publisher looking for a developer, if you're a developer looking for a publisher, you should be at GDC. But we're going to assume you're already going to GDC, you know, hence the, the advice we're going to be doling out today. Um, where do you want to start, Andy? If y'all have any questions to, you know, the the masses for, for Andy and I, when it comes to these shows, toss them out there as well. And we can we can hit those up so um wait there's one G question let's how about you answer this jay how many games have you shipped i can't tell you honestly i had somebody ask me that the other week and i, and I was like i have no idea at this point so you 50 know, 100 more than that probably more than 100 i mean i've been doing this for 20 years and, and you know it's not like where you're a developer and you work on a project for you know, 12, 18, 24 months, and then you release it. Or where you're a publisher and you're releasing, you know, five, 10 games a year. Mm. You know, I've been involved in, you know, with developers as, with developers and publishers as clients who are shipping that many a year. And then our, in our early days, we shipped titles across multiple countries. So we'd have individual launches. When you had a game, you would have a different publisher and therefore a different launch in every single country so, so yeah at this point a shit ton basically I don't, I don't a even. shit ton oh as for me i've been in the gaming industry for what year is it 2019 eight years nine years um and so i as far as companies that i've worked for oh you're asking casual games oh, okay companies i've worked for i would say at least 15 but honestly i don't know but as an influencer or doing content creation or something like that it's a lot more it adds up quick i mean if you make it five years in this industry you're considered a veteran oh here we go so rhino punch preparation for gdc what materials should you show up with portfolio demo laptop yes <laughs> what if you're not ready to showcase but want to start the conversations with publishers interested parties what should you do those are great questions mr j hey rhino uh good to see you and hit me up and we'll get a beer if you're gonna be out there um so materials you should bring don't worry about a lot of printed materials because those just end up in the hotel trash room the hotel room trash anyway um you want to if you've got a playable of your game that's wonderful but you got to keep in mind when you're doing a meeting at gdc it's typically a 30 minute meeting and then you have to realistically take 10 minutes off of that because you know you're five minutes late getting there and they're going to be five minutes early to get to their next meeting so you got to figure you're only really going to have 15 20 minutes so don't sit down with you know and have to like set up your laptop and, and your sound system and everything else and then boot up the game and do all that because it's just not going to fly um jay can you the, adjust your cam down to aim down a little bit something ooh. happened and now all of a sudden there's like this massive I just, amount I, of white space above your head there we go I, 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 that'll work I better. And, and sat back in my chair and stopped typing um <laughs> <laughs> so the bare minimum get a 10 slide powerpoint deck and a video and so you that way you can talk and, and describe the the unique selling points of your game while the video is rolling so um yeah see this is why i don't do good streaming i'm trying to answer all the questions at the same time no, it's doing fine. One, just, the time. Just one i will field the questions i'll feel all right so business card is the only printed material you need to have the then have a deck and have a video of the game because if, once you get back and do your follow-ups, that's when you can send builds and all that kind of good stuff. And keep in mind, I don't carry a laptop around because you carry that laptop around for three days, it gets ridiculously heavy and tiring and everything like that. If you're a developer, it's a different ball game. You kind of need one. Uh, but if you, if you don't have a playable and you can get away with showing a video on an iPad, you know, not like your phone that's this big, but you know, 
you need to pack light basically imagine you're going hiking every ounce of weight counts um but yeah main thing you're a video a powerpoint deck and your business cards okay so i'm gonna we'll get Peter's pants question in a second but this is a kind of a follow-up from that from games from love what should be in your powerpoint deck uh we have a link for that oh i have to find okay. i have to find it so why but, are you finding that link uh Peter's pants said if you're looking to book some meetings but are a little late in the game should party and booth networking be the way to go yes but i can also tell you for 75 bucks you can get access to fedors meet to match uh, meet to match meet to and match there's still a lot there's 750 companies in that thing meet as of to match. the last time i checked hold on one second and and that is meet to match.com so i'll put that in there I, no there's your i got it right there okay bam look at that go there pay 75 bucks get a pass and spend i shit you not if you haven't booked any meetings yet spend the next three days doing research and outreach find the publishers you want and all of that sort of stuff and if you will ping me on discord like this afternoon or this evening i'll even help you do that and um, the thing that's great about that is so many people are just going to be around gdc they're not going to be there so a lot of those meetings will be like in a hotel room or in this place or whatever and you wouldn't have the opportunity to go to those except for using me to match there's uh, like so many more opportunities for me to match uh so for newbies what's the success rate from using me to match it's it's there's no success rate in the show anyway. <laughs> there's everybody comes back from a conference and they're like, oh yeah, it was awesome. And we met all these great people and then it's all this stuff's gonna happen. And then, you know, a fraction of it happens. The the beauty of meet to match is it gets you in the door to get the meeting in the first place. Whether or not that meeting is a success depends on you and the partner and how good a fit it is. But you know, when it comes to quickly and easily identifying companies that you need to meet with and talk to that's where the value of it comes in. Um, and what was I looking for originally? Oh, our deck. Um, pitch deck infographic. This is like one of the few infographs I've ever done, and it's one of the most requested. You started a small games from love. I'm looking at gamesfromlove.com, and that is like, uh, it says that domain. Oh, wait, wait, it's doing something. What is, what is the game that you guys are working on? Gamesfromlove.com is doesn't, it's just like waiting, 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 waiting. Don't go to my domain. Oh God, no. So what games are you working on? Games from love. That's, that's what I'm curious. Rhino punch. No, the website isn't set up. Just reserved. Ah, so you got, what was your booth? Evil Villain Games. I'm just looking at your Twitter. That's all I'm doing. And you went with <laughs> another company at the time. You was with Legion. Ah. I'm just looking. I'm going through your Twitter account. That's what I'm doing. It's what I do. <laughs> I stalk people online. So Nightwolf, if you if you can't have a meeting with a matter of size, but having a projector or mini projector be better ah, it's hard to say if you're gonna be in that meeting room the entire time and you know for a fact you're gonna have a decent sp spot to shoot the projector it would be worth it mm. if you're not going to be in the booth and you're going to be walking around and going from meeting to meeting it's just extra shit to carry just take and, the laptop and you know what you can happen. totally have your ipad and then have your deck on it and your video and just go here check it out pachink, pachink, pachink. Yeah. you really all you need is this and some business cards i mean this is like the down to it and some shoes that have gel insoles <laughs> yes that's gel another insoles. one Bar oh god. my god without gel it's insoles uh i see people yeah. walking around in flip-flops or freaking sandals and i'm like what are you doing I used to, you know, back when I worked for other people and I would have to wear a suit to GDC, it, walking around all day in like business shoes is ridiculously uncomfortable. Yeah. So 
the, without a doubt, the, um, the insult, the insults, the inserts are the way to go when you're at these things too. I have my con shoes. Oh, all right. So what did I miss? All right. So, all right. So back to the, um, these are my con shoes right here. Right? <laughs> no, actually, these are my con shoes right here. Not these. <laughs> Crocs. They're cr look, look, look at their Crocs. They got skulls and crossbones, bacon, and eggs. Um, deodorant and brush your teeth. Mouthwash. Oh take a um, shower. Yeah, take a shower. But more than that, make sure that your mouth is fresh because uh, there's so many people you go up to. I, I don't, for me personally, I don't mind if somebody stinks a little cause you know, they're sweating or whatever, but some people just have like really bad breath. And I am the type of person I'll be like, dude, I just got to tell you this right now, but you have bad breath <laughs> and you know, I don't want to make you mad, but I just want you to know. So the next 30 people you talk to, you're not uh, breathing on them. Exactly. And people might get pissed off, but I think I'm doing a service. <laughs> so <laughs> antibacterial hand gel. Massive, yes, we have I oh. got ones that have little hooky things, and then you always, 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 and instead of shaking hands, I fist bump. I the, do, um, don't like to shake hands, I fist bump. So, so one of the I call it somewhat hippie remedies that I, I discounted for years when my wife was like, You need to do this, and I'm like, Whatever, it doesn't work. And then the I did it one time, your shoes. <laughs> I totally did not get sick at all. Emergency, oh, yes, it's a little powder that you put. I'll start to, so I fly on Tuesday morning. I'll start drinking that stuff like Saturday and Sunday before because it helps you not get sick. And yeah. then you're going to get something if you don't. I, you I know, also take, take zinc as well. Take, yeah. Zinc's good. Um, hand sanitizer is a, is a just have to, but you got to make sure that Carry you're around a hanky <laughs> is as good as possible. Because you're going to be on that airplane, the flying petri dishes, as I, you know, described them. Um, so yeah, um, and then so you're going to forget, and you're going to eat a freaking hot dog. You're going to take that first bite, and you're going to go, "Damn it! I just freaking shook like 50 people's hands." You know, <laughs> get con crud. Yeah. Um, all right. So Rhino says, "Let's assume I have a presentation deck. I'm professionally dressed in deodorant." Okay, you're on top of things right now the attention of a potential client and five minutes of their time what should i focus on during why is your game different <clears throat> and so why is your game different and what do you need because that's the two big things if you need development funding to get it finished tell them up front because otherwise you're going to get in people oh yeah it's exciting blah blah and it's like oh wait you needed 200 grand we're not gonna give you 200 grand and you've just wasted all that time so you want to you know hit the major points this is my game this is why it's cool this is what i need i need distribution on pc and console i need 200 grand in development funding or i need no development funding and i need marketing and distribution support all of that sort of stuff that just hit the basics right um i want to tell you guys something super super important i mean this is so freaking important and you might have been pissing people off and not even realizing it somebody hands you a business card don't just take it go like that and stick it in your pocket bam take it like this with both hands and then read it and look at it and then acknowledge it and then take it because in a lot of cultures Japan it, it is rude it is very important yeah in Japanese and some Asian cultures it is very important if you notice you will give them your business card they will hold it with both hands like this and they will read it and they will look at it and they will flip it over and they will read it and they will acknowledge it if you don't do that that is immediate bam you're just like done that's like an immediate no from the very, very beginning, it's super disrespectful. And, and here's your, your second little tool that you need to have when you're doing business cards, an ink pen. Because when you get that business card, you turn around after you're done talking to the person because you don't want to write on their business card in front of them. That's another no-no. But you need to write on the back of that card who they are so you remember it. Because otherwise, and I've been doing this 20 years and I still do it at least once or twice, after every show, I come back with a stack of business cards and I'm flipping through them and I go, who the hell was that? And I have no idea if I don't 
you know, get something and carry that pin with you to parties everywhere else, because you're going to meet people left and right. The more business cards you hand out, the more you're going to get in return. And you need to, you know, be able to remind yourself a week later who that person was that you met after the eighth beer at the party. Right. Now to stop that from happening for your, from your end. Now my don't mom have was, car. my, don't, don't have, have cards that look like Indies. <laughs> Bam. No, look at that. See, it's got my picture right on I it. I know, but you can't write on it. You can write on it, but you have to have the right pin. But yes, you cannot write on this kind of stuff because I got a gloss on both sides. But my mom was a delegate at a presidential convention, presidential, whatever it's called, whenever they elect the president. God, that, I'm terrible. And uh, that was her advice was, and she learned that from somebody on your media, have your picture on it. Because if you go to an event, people are going to come back with 50 cards and you're not going to know who the hell it is. But people can look at this and go, oh, it was that dude. Bam, right there. I've immediately, everybody knows that this is my card because it's got my picture on it. Yes, you can't write on it. That was my, my mistake for having high gloss on both sides. But... But it's got my picture on it, so people don't have to be like, hey, it was this dude, because it's got my picture. The right pin. Well, I have a pin for you. Ba hey, that's a good idea. Just make sure punch. it's not a shitty pin. No, they have pins that are meant for writing on, on that kind of material. All right, so oh, I know, punch. but I'm just saying, if you're giving away pins, you just have to make sure it's not a shitty pin. Make sure it's like a high-quality pin, right? Just like... It same with business cards really if someone hands you like a crappy business card that was printed at wherever it's like yeah well if they're not willing to spend the extra 10 bucks on better business cards then you know i, mean, I understand people are trying to save money but still you want to put your best foot forward so flip side of the question what if you don't have a project to present but are looking more for partnership opportunities any advice on making most of those the most of those conversations so the if you're if you're doing the cold calling at a show where you don't really have a meeting, you're just going around, and, you know, the best thing to do is to go to each one of your you go to the booths for each of those partners that you're looking at, and generally there will be somebody standing there as a host or a hostess, you know, somebody up front just greeting people. Get the information because sometimes they'll have cards, sometimes they'll have business cards. Sometimes I'll have printed material, find out from that person who you should be talking to and get their contact information. If they have an opening in the schedule, and sometimes they will, you know, you can try to get a meeting right there on the spot, but you just got to keep in mind, they're probably not going to, you know, have one, uh, have an opening anyway. So go around, talk to those people. And this is where it's really key when you're out you know, in the evenings, one, don't get wasted. Just don't, don't. I don't even know how to say that any better. Just don't be stupid. Um, and, and you know that from experience? I, from experience, <laughs> I've watched CEOs like grope their, you know, developers. I've seen so many people do so much stupid shit at a conference because, you know, they decided it was a good time to go and get drunk. If you want to get drunk, get drunk like this weekend. Don't get drunk next week at the show because that's where bad shit can happen. And then you're going to smell uh, like ass the next day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, be open. I mean, just talk to people. Introduce yourself. Ask, hey, what are you working on? You know, anything like that when you're out at, you know, these parties and, you know, the networking events later on. Because, I, I you know, this is coming from a guy who has a database of 4,000 developers. You know, there's absolutely nothing that can go wrong with knowing one more person in the industry. You know, it's, it's a great chance to actually meet new people, expand your network and, you know, expand your project too. You know, we were go, we were outside, this was two years ago and we had two guys come up to us. We were standing outside and they just wanted to bomb a light. And we're like, yeah, sure. And so, you know, we started, talking and I was like, so where are you guys from? And, and they just kind of like grand and they're like, yeah, we work at Apple. I mean, they were some of the gatekeepers for, you know, the iTunes store that we just happened to run into, you know, meet and, and chat and say hi. So, you know, go around, don't be afraid to 
you know, just go up to these booths and say, hey, look, this is what I do. I need to speak to the person who's in charge of this X, Y, Z, whatever you need. And be prepared. They're probably going to say their schedule's full, but to get their contact information so you can follow up with them after the show. Yeah. Yeah, big time. And you know what? Another great meeting place is where everybody eats. People will just be sitting around. I've actually went to conferences and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here for like two hours. And I met some of the most amazing connected people in the industry just sitting there. They would come up and like, is anyone sitting here? No, go ahead. I'm like, hey, I'm so-and-so. What, you know, who are you? What do you do? And they, the, you know, they would talk and, and it, I met some amazing people. Okay, so what is the next question? How early should you go? What if your game is in pre-production? It's never too early to start networking. Never. You don't necessarily, yeah. I mean, you should, if you have a game that's even in your head, it's worthwhile to be there and meet people. But even PAX though, is so expensive, Jay. Well, I know they all are expensive. That's why we're doing our <laughs> show. <laughs> Yes. Oh, speaking of that, you want to you want to talk about that real quick while before we go on. So I mean, yeah, it is. Hold on, I'm putting the um, indie game dot business. Yeah. So these things are expensive, and you do have to you know justify your time and, and ration out where you're going to go. I mean, doing two shows back to back, you know, it's expensive. And, and a couple of years ago, I flew to Berlin to Casual Connect Berlin then took a train over and did white nights in prague the next week and it's just it's exhausting i mean it's absolutely exhausting and it's expensive so we have you know the show that we put together working with meet to match as well on that one and you can do all of this networking and all of you know your publisher searching and influencer searching and we've got sponsors you know influencer sponsors are going to be coming to this thing um pr companies you can do it all and you can get a ticket right now for like 85 bucks i think do you have the information on how many attendees not yet because we have we haven't i'm worrying about that after gdc okay <laughs> Okay. Because right now it's like everybody's focused on GDC and PAX. Yeah. Um, and nobody's going to be, uh, yeah. There will be over at least over a hundred. I mean, that's part of the reason we're working with meet to match is, you know, Fedora's got 750 companies coming to just as GDC space. So, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get, you know, all the major publishers there, as many influencers as we can. We want to make sure it's good for, and if good you're for using meet to match in general. For Lord's sake, fill out all your information. Oh God, yes. <laughs> fill out, fill don't, it out. Just spend don't the time. Be that person. Fill it out. Um, oh, at Nightwolf, for most businesses that I've seen locally, they give paper or cardstock cards, which have a high likelihood of being thrown away or destroyed by accident. However, laminated or glossy cards stay in the pocket longer, which is true. That's one of the reasons I did. It's like a toss-up. Laminated cards stay in your pocket longer, but you can't write on them. Um, would the affirmation pen be best for gloss or perhaps having both a gloss and paper card work? You can get it where it's gloss on one side and flat on the other, which is what I probably should have done. I should have done that and made room to write on it, but I didn't. I just made the choice to not do that, but I think it is good to have, because uh, you can get it gloss on one side and not on the other. Rhino Punch is registered. Nice. I'm registered as well. I'm pretty excited for it. Um, uh, uh, Brian, uh, send me a message so I can get you tagged in the Discord as a conference attendee. Yes. Um, while, I'm, while I'm thinking about that. So, uh, all right. One, I can think of, I can probably list on one hand the number of business cards I've lost over the years. It's just, I don't, I don't lose them. As a matter of fact, I have a whole section in my, um, I actually have, a, in my office, I have an old card catalog. I know a lot of you younger folks may not know what that is, but I have a car. <laughs> I have a car catalog in my office, and the I have an entire drawer that's nothing but business cards I got from trade shows. I keep these things for years. So yeah, I mean I'm not. Did don't you worry have them alphabetized losing. by person or by company? Oh God, no! I have them all just shoved in there. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> all right, Stuart I mean, Basculus, He's got a question here. But, any tips for setting up meetings or other productive stuff in advance when you don't have a big Rolodex and the event doesn't have a matchmaking system in place? Meet to match. Meet to match. <laughs> Straight back. You may have come in just a little too late 
and you missed that conversation, but go to, um, where's my link? I got, I'm going to have to bitly on speed dial today. Uh, go here to the, uh, the meet to match venue or the meet to match site, pay 75 bucks, get access to their database. And the other, all right, so here's the other beautiful thing. And we need to talk about this with Fedora. If you go and you use their system, and even if you're, even if your um, meeting is declined because they're full or whatever, you can still get their email address and their contact info. And so you can easily follow up with them later. And I'll even say to a lot of folks that send me requests or if I'm booked or whatever, it's like, look, if you want to meet earlier, if you want to get on a call earlier or just catch up after the show, you know, that's perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, do that. I mean, in terms of, in terms of last minute meeting, go to meet to match. The other thing that you can do is GDC has a listing online of all their exhibitors. They don't have all their attendees, but they have all their exhibitors. And so that's a good place to start. I mean, to be blunt, if you started doing that right now, just the research time it's going to take you to find a contact of those companies is probably going to be prohibitive. Um, Unless but, you outsource it. Well, yeah, that's true. But so that when it comes to basic data entry, I have absolutely no problem in you know using Fiverr or outsourcing that sort of stuff. But when it comes to getting contacts, uh, that requires at least a bit of industry knowledge to know right. what type of person to go for. Um, oh, oh, okay, sorry. All right, so if we're looking at in general then, so go to their way. Generally, these sites are gonna have, you know, who's attending, because that's their big promotion thing. If that's, you know, the, the big hamstring for the indie game business event. We've never done one, so I can't go and say, look at all these publishers that have come in the past because there's never been one. Um, but you know, if you go to most of the event sites, there will be a listing of attendees or past attendees. And you can use that as a starting point to go and find who's going to be there. You know, look, see, you know, go to the email, go to, um, my brain is working much faster than my mouth this morning. Go to the website for the, uh, the company that you find and then use, uh, there's a website called hunter.io and you can put in a URL for that company and it will spit out any publicly available emails that it can find on the web pertaining to that URL. It's very, very, very handy. Um, that's when you start, that's how you build your, your database. Um, look at things like, uh, adopt my game. They'll have, you know, developers and publishers on there and some service providers. Uh, there's another one that I never can pronounce. Un Unio, Unio, I, 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 I have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, those are good, you know, for finding people. And then you just, you know, send them an email and say, Hey, look, I'm going to PAX East or, you know, I'm going to Gamescom, you know, are you going to be there? Uh, a lot of that, so, that sort of stuff. Um, it's all a mat, all a matter of doing that research initially to build that list and we'll actually create. So my company can actually create custom lists for you. If you need, like, I need to know who all the mobile publishers in, you know, the industry are, that's something that we can actually do at our company. We will, we'll send, we can send you a list of that. It's not cheap because it's a pain in the ass, but you know, it's, it is good. Hi, Lily bite. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, folks in the chat, don't ever discount speaking to the intern or the guy who isn't in charge. It's the most foolish decision you can make and uh, you can make. Be direct and get in there. I know that last year one guy tried to have a conversation with my boss who brushed him off and a different guy ran up and forced a conversation and got his foot in the door. That's true. It's like, and also you never know who you're talking to. The thing is that guy who rushed up never had contact again. The guy who was brushed off got his foot in the door through me. Oh, yep. Yeah. Nice. And you never know who you're talking to. I mean, you can see somebody and it's like, this dude doesn't look important. And that could be like the CEO of the company. You just yes. never know. 
because you know you just you just don't so everybody is a potential friend a potential networking possibility and could potentially be somebody you work with in the future that's like what they what people say a lot about this industry it's so small somebody that is working under you right now or somebody that you brushed off could be like your next boss you just you just never know what sort of sort of topics should i focus on during discussion with industry people while engaged in a more casual conversation. No politics, no religion. Anything <laughs> else is fair game. But you got to, I mean, especially politics these days. Religion is kind of like always one. But, you know, even beyond all the decis divisiveness that's in our country right now, you know, you're dealing with people from all across the globe. I mean, and, and so it's rarely a good thing to get involved in those discussions so but you know anything else along the lines who was it that was um oh it was bradley was talking about one of his you know favorite questions to ask was you know what do you like to do when you're not making games you know that sort of stuff you know people i mean at the end of three days or four days or five days however long you're actually there you know there's you kind of get tired of giving your elevator pitch over and over and over and over again. You know, it's, it is refreshing to sit down and, you know, talk to folks about what they're not doing in games, right. you know, what, what, what gets them interested in stuff. Um, so I mean, that, that's one of the, I like to ask people what their favorite game is right now. So what game are you playing right now? And you'd be surprised about the answers. Somebody that's like working on a hard hardcore RPG could like freaking Candy Crush. You know, I play Candy Crush. You know what I mean? It's weird. So that's always a good conversation starter. It's always better than hi, how are you doing? Because honestly, <laughs> hi, how are you doing? Is like, that's like, it's a, if you say hi, how's it going? That is a complete missed opportunity. The complete missed opportunity. When instead you could engage them with something else. What do I like to do when not making game, ma not making games? I've forgotten. I don't know. <laughs> I'm stuck in this little room. What do you, what do you mean? There's other stuff to do besides making games. <laughs> All right. Advice on capitalism, closing an opportunity during discussions, potential client states they're interested. How do you close that deal? You're not going to close that deal at, at the conference, right? I've done, I've, I've closed one deal at a conference in 20 years. Um, that it's just, it's that rare. You need to make sure that you follow up like immediately, you know, it, if not, you can do it a quick follow up like that night when you get back to the hotel. Um, but most people won't read that. Yeah. I mean, you will, but it gets lost. It gets you know, lost. Yeah. Else. So my sweet spot for following up is. So for GDC it would be Tuesday of the following week, not Monday because everybody's flown back over the weekend. They're tired. They're probably sick and <laughs> their inbox is flooded with shit that they got while they were gone for the last week. Uh -huh. Give everybody a day or two to get like through that and then hit them up. Have I run into anyone involved in game creation, whether it be developer or publisher or company, who did not play video games at all? I've ran into people that... You would be shocked how <laughs> yes. many people... Oh my... That Especially when you start... And then they don't play at all. They're like, well, sometimes I play this one oh. little game on my phone. You, it, It's crazy. You would be absolutely shocked and appalled at how many people... That's, I mean, quite frankly, that's... Part of the reason I was able to kickstart my career back in the 90s and early 2000s. I mean, that is the reason I got my first job. The guys that I was, you know, went to work for, they knew business. They were Duke Business School graduates. They're smart guys. They didn't know games. I didn't know the first thing about business. I took one econ class in Chapel Hill and I got a D in it, I think. You know, it's, I knew games though, you know, and, and that's what got me to where I am today. I still spend probably too much time playing games and, and you know, I'm <laughs> running a company and I've got a family and kid and all that kind of good stuff. There are, <laughs> I can't tell you how many companies that, you know, are run by people who don't have never played a game. Well, they won't admit they're gamers. It's like, are you a gamer? No. 
well is that candy crush yeah but that's not a game oh i'm sorry what the hell is it then you know if it's that's not a funny game, that's a game you're a gamer uh if you, yeah so if you're not closing deals per se what should your main focus be during events like you so all right you're not going to close the deal you're moving deals forward that's what your your goal should be you know gdc if we give it a football analogy you know it's time for that you know pass out to the flats you know you're not just like running the ball and moving it four yards at a time you want to get further down the field and so you know no a deal isn't going to be closed at gdc but you can use that time to move the leads that you have further down the field and then find new leads as well all right it's also time to make like interpersonal connections with people because while online you can communicate with someone over discord or whatever every day for six months um and never see them on cam and you do have a connection but once you meet that person in person and you're like in the actual vicinity of them it is it's a completely different thing yeah especially if you can get time to you know just unwind and i mean i've got several most of my meetings and most days at gdc i have my last meeting scheduled with you know someone you want to hang out with yeah, basically, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's at that point, it's, you know, all of my last meetings next week are people that I've known for years, and we may have things that we're going to do together and we may not, but, you know, it's somebody to unwind, to talk to, to, you know, deepen that personal relationship because we are, we're all spread out. I mean, you look at this show, it's like I'm on one coast, Indy's on another coast. We probably have people from other countries in here looking and, and, and chatting right now. Video conferences are awesome. You know, they do give you a new sense of, you know, understanding and, and, and you can see people and you can read their body language to an extent, but it's still not as good as that in-person visit, you know, that, that, you know, FaceTime, directly FaceTime that we have. So, you know, you need to smell the people. <laughs> yes, and you will. That's not a problem. <laughs> And you will smell them. <laughs> That's funny. If anything, get your new contacts to give you their contacts. If you can't help, tell me who can mentality. Oh, yeah, for sure. Be polite. Also, it's not about just networking for business. It's about make, creating new relationships, you know, because it's easier to work with somebody that is you've created some kind of a some kind of a bond or some kind of relationship with even if it's just a little bit people are more apt like okay let's say there's a job opportunity somebody is always more apt to reach out to somebody that they know than somebody that they don't you know what i mean oh yeah that's that's the, that's the other tip always be looking for a job <laughs> it's not always and, be and looking. it sounds i mean it it sounds bad but and, and not like you need to be running around and handing out your, your resume all day long, but there was a very profound article that got shared, you know, from Polygon this week where a woman was talking about how working in this industry basically means you're never safe in your, you know, you can, you can never be comfortable and safe you know, in a job. Hold on one second. Um, because games come and they go. It's not like McDonald's this is going to be there forever. I mean, even even League of Legends. I mean, they're trying to make it where it won't have its time. But, you know, unless League of Legends will probably have its time. I mean, you would have thought that MySpace would go on forever. But MySpace did not. Really? <laughs> I mean, come on. It was a social networking. Everybody was on it. You know, what was it? 60 some percent of the population of people were yeah, on it. You would and, think and, that something that's so bam. Yeah. Well, my space isn't, I, you know, <laughs> my, my space might exist. Let's see. I deleted my account off my space. I'm going to go look at it right now. My so, space. And everybody had glittery unicorn animated, you know, gifts on their site. Wow. It's still um, there. So, uh, Games for Love, I actually own just one business. We have different facets within that business, though. But then I'm on the advisory board for uh, Operation Supply Drop, 
and I am now also on the advisory board for our local community college game division, game curriculum. I could probably spin Indie Game Business off as its own company at this point, but not going to yet. Yo, what college is this? I don't know. I'm looking at Lady Gaga's MySpace page right now. <laughs> Lady Gaga's MySpace uh, it was, page? Yeah, it was just there. And I was like, okay, I'll look at it. It's um, it's Wilkes Community College up here in the mountains. Not Wake Tech down where y'all are, who also has an actually really good, um, really good program as well. I had several friends of mine design the curriculum over there. Wonder if I can get MySpace.com. Oh, MySpace. Sign in with your Facebook account to find friends who are That's on MySpace. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's mostly for music. I'm going to see if I can get MySpace.com slash indie. Oh, wait, you can sign up with Facebook or sign up with Twitter. Anyways, I should probably not get distracted. I'm like, squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, all right, so things to keep in your like backpack or your, and, and, and that's an interesting thing too. If you'd asked me five years ago, I would have never carried a backpack around GDC because it looked unprofessional. Now it's completely different. I actually have a backpack briefcase. I have a now. backpack with wheels. Well, see, that's good too. <laughs> That, the problem is when you get somewhere like on the main show floor at GDC is like you're going to be running over people with a, with a you know, wheel, wheel thing dragging them behind you. Um, but bottle of water, mints, grab you a granola bar or a banana or something on your way, you know, to the show, especially around the Moscone Center. I don't know about packs because I've, I've never been there, but around the Moscone Center, there are plenty of um little drugstores or there's even there's even a target that's like right across the street from it some sort of snack to keep you sustained through the day um get a backup battery if you don't have one you know i've actually got a couple that were given to me as swag a buddy of mine at paramount several years ago at the licensing show was giving out you know, speed chargers as, as swag. And I'm like, dude, this is like the best swag ever. You know, you, you're, you're going to run out of power on your stuff eventually anyway. Um, carry your backup backup battery and always have a pen and paper and your business cards. So that's your like go bag for the conference. Backpack, it's a man bag. <laughs> well, see, I had a... um. I had actually, I still have it. I just don't use it anymore. Uh, a 10 buck two, like satchel bag. But you know, after a full day of toting around a laptop and all the other shit that goes in that bag, it's like you, you cut a crease into your shoulder. Uh, now I've just got like a, it's made by e-bags. It's an awesome little bag. That, and it has a charger built into it. No, I didn't have a charger built into it, but I have those, you know, portable speed charger things that I carry around. Trying to go through all my like notes on, you know, best tips. So yes, definitely get um, shoe inserts if you're not wearing uh, tennis shoes. And, and that's the thing. All right. So if you've never been to one of our conferences, a game conference, you don't have to wear a suit. You'll actually stand out if you wear a suit. My professional get up for one of these shows is a pair of nice jeans and a polo, you know, and, and it's got my company logo on there. You don't necessarily have to be in a suit and tie. So you can dress a little more comfortably, but you know, unless you've got comfortable like tennis shoes, then you're going to be better off. Go, go down to the drugstore and get you some inserts to go in there. Um, what else? What other questions? We got we got had so many questions now and then uh, coming uh, in. I don't know. I just signed up for I MySpace, lost. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just made up the real indie MySpace account. They didn't have an indie shirt. Bring a change of a shirt. Yes, and maybe some underwear. Why I is the it. show title the same? Because I did because I didn't update it in time. You should be able to like refresh. Let me see. I'm gonna refresh. In and amongst me having to uninstall a whole bunch of random crap that, yeah, if you hit refresh, it'll fix it. You know, that um, the flash 
installed or installed on my computer, you know, an hour ago. Uh, I hey, forgot Jim. to update the, um, I forgot to update the channel info, but it's updated now. So you should be good to go. Um, all right. And so random request, if there is somebody who's watching the show who has not followed us, follow us so we can hit 550. I just wanted to see 550 there. Um, can you have a uniform with your logo, like a letterman jacket, plus a suit jacket? Would that be in between a suit and a business casual expectation? Sure. Wear what you want. All right. <laughs> so here's my concern on wearing like a letterman jacket. It you may get hot. Honestly. Thank you for the you follow. Know, when you're you're in these halls and there's a lot of technology in there. There's a lot of you know people in there. And thank you very much, Stray Basilisk and Game Show. Um, you actually run the run the risk of getting hot i mean so but you could carry I it over your shoulder like a cool kid you know you, <laughs> you could yeah you're yo right. hey uh, Vinny I, Barino. <laughs> unless it's gonna rain or something i generally don't wear a jacket to the show because i know it's just again it's just one more thing to carry i mean it's not gonna be if we're talking about gdc it's not gonna be that bad weather wise you know, while we're there, I can't speak for Boston though. Um, it's going to be freezing <laughs> cold, but that's okay. I'll still wear shorts. Oh uh, yes, a mullet is is mullet is like yeah. Well, I'm going to wear a mohawk, so a purple mohawk. But that's GDC Queen of the Blah. Thank you for the follow. And I'm also a content creator, so I wear like plaid pants and uh, uh, jammy pants at conventions are kind of my thing. Um, and uh, one convention, one Paxis, I wore all orange, orange pants, or a bright orange shirt. I was, of course, working at a booth, but dude, you were stuck in a blizzard at Pax 2017. You got stuck there until the following Thursday. There was the oh one Pax. God. I looked like Naruto. Could you? You could totally wear a cardboard box. Yep. Actually, there I, was somebody, Lily. There was somebody, and it might have been a Pax where they. War. I can't remember if it was a box they put over them or it was something designed to protect their personal space. It was awesome. You know, I, not, I, maybe I, not the most practical thing in the world, but it had like a sign on it that said, you know, this is my personal space. And it would physically keep people from, you know, like 12 inches around you. <laughs> GDC checklist Crocs, branded man bag, tux t shirt, mullet deodorant, and pitch deck. Yes. And uh, mints. Gotta, don't forget your mints. Yeah, don't forget your mints and your hand stuff. Uh, so at TwitchCon, there was um, a kid who was probably like 12 with his mom. And this I thought was super neat. Of course, uh, can you wear a grill? Totally wear a grill. Um, <laughs> well, the kid was a streamer. And what he had, he had this big cardboard cutout thing that looked like his Twitch channel. Right? Like if you were watching it on Twitch, but it was open so you can stand behind it and then you would hold it up and you stand behind it and get your picture taken with this kid. And I thought that was the awesomest thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was um, a good thing. Maybe we can get indie game you can get indie game business ones, Jay, and have like little have this right here and then have little cutouts and then you can get your picture taken with people to promote IGB. Like like Vegas Vacation? Yeah. The, the fake ID the fake ID maker. Yeah. Um all right, so you are right, game for look, you joke, but I will tell you this. It's like Andy and his, you know, jammy pants. Ed Deal, who's been doing this as long, if not, no longer than I have. He runs Fox Studios. He was an agent back, you know, with us, and he does a lot of uh, similar stuff to what we do at the Power Group. Ed, for years, and I don't think he does it anymore. I'll tell you next week. Ed would wear, like, I call him a Panama hat and a Hawaiian print Sure. Now he lives in Hawaii, so that, you know, makes sense. But, and he's a tall guy. Ed's like 6'4", you know, and so you could always, you know, stand, he would stand out and you could always find him because that's what he wore, you know, to all the conferences. And it was just one, of, he, you know, he basically created his own brand and made it easy for folks to find him by doing that. So, you know, it won't be as easy if you have a grill on or gold teeth because your mouth's closed all the time. But, you know, there is something to be said for, you know, having your your personal brand around there. To be like the guy that has the thing that has like the alien antenna or something on it. You know? And yeah, have your logos on the end of the antenna. I don't know. 
I, I don't think anyone's going to pull you over in, in San Francisco for possibly popping pills. First, the first time I went to GDC after they legalized marijuana, I spent like two days wandering around trying to figure out why everything smelled like weed. Yeah, because it does. Because people are smoking everywhere. Yep. Oh, all right. So let me. Okay. So meet. Let's talk about meetings. Meetings. If you don't have a meeting location, and you know, if you don't, once again, meet to meet match. to match. Um, if you don't have a meeting location, places to not hold meetings. Do not book a meeting for a Starbucks. One, they're stupid crowded and loud. And two, there's about 5,000 of them within 50 feet of the Moscone Center. So you'll be in a situation where it's like, I'm at the Starbucks. And they're like, no, you're not. And you're at two Starbucks that are like across the street from each other. Don't book meetings at Starbucks. Um, be careful about booking meetings at certain hotels. The W, you'll see, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, meet me over the W. The W hold downstairs. The, you know, the bar area is a clusterfuck during GDC. It is packed. You can't find people. Horrible place to meet. Another, you know, good place to meet is the Marriott Marquis Lobby. There's still going to be, that's a great place to hang out and network. Mm, excuse me. But it's bigger. There's a lot more space. So you can actually move around and there's a lot of tables and there's a lot of booths and there's a big bar space and it's just a big space in general. So that is a better location to do impromptu meetings, but it's also the, the bar downstairs at the Marriott Marquis and then the bar at the very top, which is affectionately known to everybody who's been to GDC as the Death Star bar. Uh, those are, good places to just kind of like hang around and network um but then the 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 w not i don't recommend that one for doing a meeting uh and you have to be careful about trying to meet too many people at parties uh i saw you know several invites got sent to me yesterday and it's like free party we're blah 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 and i'm like okay so everybody and their damn brother is going to be there it's going to be packed it's going to be loud you're not going to be able to get a drink and you're not really going to be able to network um parties are loud yeah they are i mean sometimes you can go to one the ones along the lines of a a more subdued crowd can be much easier to manage if somebody is offering here's the deadly combo if it is free with free drinks and there is a DJ, skip it. If you have, you know, if you just want to go and unwind, don't get trashed. But if you want to go and unwind, those are fine. If you want to try to network with somebody or meet somebody there, forget it. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, some of the more subdued ones, and they'll be, <laughs> I'm not going to say you need to crash parties, but I will say there are <laughs> a lot of events that happen in the bars immediately around the Moscone Center starting at like four in the afternoon and many times not all the time many times they really don't care who comes because they just want to get people in there and they're like sponsored by AppSumo or you know some of the um, a lot of the ad companies and monetization companies and things like that you know no, there's not going to be an all-star band there or anything, but it is a good place to, you know, to meet right. and, you know, a little bit of social net, social, you know, hacking, <laughs> socializing, you mean, <laughs> yeah, what, hacking. Is, what is the, what is the, um, what is the phrase when you mean when you go and you like talk your way into some, anyway, a little bit of that no. <laughs> manipulation, a little bit of that can go a long way with, um, getting schmoozing. into some of these schmoozing. Um, all right. So wait, I saw a question yeah, about any, any tips for pitching stuff in the 15 to 20 minutes around a tiny table format, as opposed to a more traditional presentation. I don't know that our industry has a more traditional presentation. That's about as traditional as they get, to be honest with you. Um, go through, you know, have your deck, have your video, find out this is my trick. All right. So first and foremost, don't talk first, let them talk. So Andy, you're a publisher. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what you guys published last year and what you're looking to do this year and, and where you're looking to grow. Let them talk to you and that lets you position yourself and your, you know, 
your elevator pitch or your presentation to more of what they want to do. Because what you don't want to do is go in and say, you know, hey, I'm Jay. I've got a new, you know, mobile it's coming out on mobile and I need half a million dollars to get it done. And then they go, well, we don't have a half a million dollars. No, thank you. Whereas even if you did need that half a million dollars, you start out and you say, so what are y'all doing? You know, they can say, you know, they'll tell you we're looking for mid core games on mobile. You know, we're not doing a lot of investment up front in games, but we're doing, you know, we're helping a lot with the marketing and distribution on the back end. Then you can steer, I mean, you, you know, in the back of your head that they're not going to be the right publisher for you right now because you need half a million dollars to get that game done. But it's a, still a good opportunity to find out more about what they are doing because you don't know. And I've seen this happen, you know, companies, publishers, especially go and start talking to developers and they're like, we don't have any money to put into the development of these games, but we've got a great network of influencers and marketing and all this kind of good stuff that we can do. And then like two weeks later, they announced that they've got, you know, $50 million of investment from some VC firm. And it's like, so all of a sudden that conversation that you had at the show that didn't seem like it was going to be going that well, it flips it around. You know, now it's something there. So I always let them talk first so I can find out more about what they're doing and what they're looking to do this year and next year. And then you kind of tweak your presentation, tweak what you're going to say about your game based on what they are looking for. Does that help? That helps. Okay, so we got Nightwolf's question. Hearing from the stream, it sounds like the most mentioned meetings at conventions are at bars or in-person short meetings at the conventions. What about conference rooms or office building rooms? Quiet places without distractions that of the norm, especially if you don't drink and also how alcohol can affect the memory. So the you're not going to have those meeting rooms and other office building rooms unless you actually have an office that's like right there at the Moscone Center or somebody's already booked them. Uh, we worked with the Canadian consulate for several years, you know, specifically with, with the Manitoba groups and then with the uh, Eastern Atlantic provinces as well. And the Canadian consulate basically buys a floor of the intercontinental or rents like a lot of rooms in there. And so they have quiet little rooms to meet, you know, for their, all their companies that are from Canada. That can happen, but you know, the ability to find somewhere that's quiet when you're at a show is limited. Um, and I'm trying to think through my head on where you can do that. The Intercontinental, if you've got meetings at the Intercontinental, you can do it there because of the way the hotel is structured. So it's actually a fairly good, I mean, the bar at the Intercontinental is still going to be very crowded, but the way the bottom floor is built, you have a choke point, for lack of a better word. You can't, there aren't a lot of ways to get in and out of the bar restaurant area at the Intercontinental. So if you're standing there in the lobby, people have to walk past you. And so you can easily find people that are in that area. And then right next to that little, that bar area, there's stairs that go up to like the next three floors, which is mostly conference rooms. And, and it's all like sectioned off and, and, you know, sold to every company that, you know, has money. But there are a lot of nice little quiet places up there on those floors that you can go to and you know have a quiet meeting so that's something that i've done in the past is you know i'll say hey look meet me at the reception area at the intercontinental or the, or the bar or whatever and you can stand it's all right there in the same area and you can stand there and, and kind of keep an eye open for you know who you're looking for and then you greet the person and you shake hands or fist bump or exchange business cards and they're like, let's go upstairs and see if we can find somewhere to talk and you walk up one flight maybe two flights of stairs and you can find somewhere that's kind of quiet you know, that you can chat, but it's not, unless you have space reserved, those conference rooms and quiet places just simply do not exist. And I had another thought in there. Welcome to my brain. It lost. Welcome it, it, to it, my oh, brain. Before you go. So, and this is something we do for all of our clients. Go through your 
schedule. One, the day of the, I mean, the, the day you leave the office, basically, because you can't really always figure out where you're going to be able to print something when you're at a show anyway. Always, always, always have a hard copy of your schedule printed because when you get in Moscone Center, you can't necessarily rely on the GDC app or Google Maps or not Google Maps, your Google Calendar because you may not have reception in there. You know, they want to get in, you want to have that backup copy. But also go through and look on LinkedIn and find the people that you're meeting with and, you know, copy their picture out and put it in that document. So we have a, um, we do a, a, a briefing booklet for our clients and it has every meeting they have, you know, who the person is from that company, a picture of that person and the, you know, the info that they need for the meeting. That picture is invaluable when you're sitting there trying to figure out who the person is in this bar that you're looking for. I highly recommend doing that. Um, all right. So those of us who can't get to GDC, what are good ideas that are for those of us who want to find funding for a prototype? Finding funding for prototypes is ridiculously hard. It's that catch 22 that we've talked about before where you need a demo to get funding, but you need funding to get a demo. Unless you are a very well established development team, not an individual, because ironically enough, what you've done as an individual has much less value compared to what you've done as a team. You know, I've worked with complete all-star teams before, but they were coming together on a first project and it was a nightmare trying to find publishing because the publisher always wants to know. So what have you done as a team? And if you haven't done anything as a team, it gets hard. Finding funding for a prototype with a team that is not established without a track record is extremely difficult. Um, Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Sean. Hey, Sean. So my advice there is start doing a lot of email and outreach. You know, I, I, I wouldn't, I, bluntly, I would not do any biz dev for the next two weeks because it's going to be, you know, crazy with everybody gone, but you need to start doing so a lot of serious research into who your possible publishers are. You know, that's going to come down to platform and budget, but you know, I can give you the whole optimist spiel of you try hard and it'll happen. But the reality of this industry is it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult to get funding for anything without a playable demo. What's our, what's our next tip on our FAQ? Oh, okay. Let's talk about parties. Um, parties can be a good place to network if they are quiet. And we talked about that for a little bit. So here's my, my, if you go into a party and it seems like loud and you're not going to be having anything done, do a lap because what happens at all of these parties is Typically they're held where there are multiple bars in the, in the facility, but everybody gets to the first bar and they stop and they'll stand there and wait 20 minutes to get a beer. When, if you kind of like snake your way through that group and go past that first bar to like the bars in the back, um, not only is it typically quieter and you don't have to wait so long for a drink, um, but you can actually find people a little more. So, you know, if you are, going out and, and going to the parties and I, and I suggest you do as long as you do it intelligently um, go and don't stop at the first bar you see and if you're going to try to network try to find a, the least loud place in there if you are looking for parties to attend go to eventbrite and then do like a search for game parties at, around gdc there's and a San ton Francisco. Of them. there's a ton yes, there's shit tons of them um, you could literally leave the Moscone Center and walk into a bar and somebody's having a party there. That's a, a, a given. Um, go to Eventbrite and then I'm certain, I haven't done a search for it, uh, but I am absolutely certain that there's a list of GDC parties out there. Uh, you feel like it. obnoxiously social people have an advantage? Is that what introverts are calling at, at introvert or extroverts now? <laughs> obnoxiously social people 
it's from... I mean, extroverts don't call introverts obnoxiously shy people. I don't think that there's an advantage. I mean, there is. I mean, of course, there is somewhat of an advantage, but you know, it's not necessarily like there's. It's it's a it's. Those there's so many people folk. out there that you don't have to have. You don't have to be like the most outgoing person, you know, in the world to, to have a conversation. Because quite frankly, there are a lot of introverts that are going to be at these shows. They're not typically the people that are doing the business, but there are a lot of introverts. And so you can actually have, you can actually bond with the other introverts that are out there. Um, here we go. See, I knew it wouldn't take me long and to find this. And extroverts will certainly talk to introverts, so don't be shy. Just because someone is loudmouth doesn't mean that you can't talk to them. Which is actually my nickname. Imagine that. But, um, shy? They, um, <laughs> <laughs> loudmouth. So, yeah, there's a there's the link to the event bright list of events that are going on around GDC. Um, Games from Love, we have a Discord where, that everybody is in. Yes. He's on there. Yeah. Let me take it. Anyone in this chat also on Discord? I want to network with you guys. We're our greatest resource for sure. That's why we have the Indie Game Business Discord. Yeah. Introverts bonding. A rare. I see in the distance. It's not that rare bonding. at GDC, though. I mean, it's, it's you know, we are an industry that is full of people who are naturally introverted and but and yeah and once a year all of us get dumped in san francisco and then in the summer we're all going to get dumped over in cologne but you know there are plenty of like-minded people out there <clears throat> your waves uh, on this i bet you that there are at least a hundred waves on discord so if you search waves, you got to have your little hashtag with your number. Otherwise, nobody will be able to find you. <laughs> like if you if you typed in the word indie, because my my thing is indie on Discord. But if you typed it in, I bet there's a bunch of them. But mine is indie hashtag zero 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 one. Ooh, wow! You you know that? That's impressive. What my hashtag? You have yeah. to when you want to tell people. Well, I just changed it to zero 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 one because I'm a Discord partner. So you oh, actually so you, can get, make, you can make your own. I can make my own. It was four three three seven, but yeah, you have to keep that. You have to keep it. You have to know it, otherwise, you people won't be able to find you. I mean, indie game business. There's probably only one, but you're going to change yours to JPal hashtag. And hashtag. I'm not a, I'm, what year, I wonder, did we start calling it hashtag? What year did it go from pound to hashtag? I don't know. But my seven-year-old will, will do something that, you know, or see something that's entertaining, and he'll look at me and go, lol. But I'm like, no, you don't. That's not what that, you don't lol. It's, I don't know, maybe I'm old. Um, all right, speaking of him, I just looked at the time, and I have to go pick him up shortly. Yeah. All right. La <laughs> so last call. Any other, you know, questions folks have for gdc and while you're pondering this i'll or run packs. through yeah or packs so I'll, I'll run back through everything if you need to do last minute networking go to me to match, me to match. Get, spend the whopping 75 dollars get access to their system and start requesting meetings like today there's the link go Sweet. do that Go do that. When you're, <laughs> when you're at the show, in your bag, if you're a developer, you want to have your uh, at least a video, your presentation, business cards, then mints, a granola bar, water, things to sustain you through the day. Start taking your emergency or zinc. Don't wear or, a bunch of cologne. Oh Some people God, are allergic. Please don't wear a bunch of cologne. Um, be mindful that there are other people that are going to be near your personal space. So shower and don't, you know, coat yourself in, you know, cologne or perfume, whichever one you wear. The, uh, all right, so if you need to know what needs to be on your PowerPoint deck, then we have this. Yeah, like a thousand dollars of snacks and water. Yes, oh, and that's good for a booth for sure. You want to have, yep. you want to have cases and cases of water. Backpack, so there's jacket, sunglasses. The, there's the ten things that you need to have in your pitch deck. 
um, network, take business cards, share business cards, treat business cards with respect, look at them, hold them in both hands, and then, you know, go on with your conversation. Have a pen handy after the meeting's over to write down a note about who that person was. Um, what else we got? So uh, network, walk the floor. Anytime that you're not in a meeting, use that time wisely. Walk around the floor, find new companies, you know, pick up information. Even if you go to a booth and you're looking for a publisher or a partner or whatever, you don't have time to talk even to the hostess. They'll typically have, you know, different material there, business cards or, or info on whatever they have. Take that, digest it later. Um, don't get trashed at the parties. What else? Did I miss anything? I think you've covered it. All right, cool. All right. And so if you're going to be at GDC, hit me up on our Discord. Um, I will be over at the um, at the meet to match area for the majority of the time. Actually, for all the time. I'm completely booked at this point. And if you're going to um, be at PAX, hit me up on Discord. Mine's in the yep. hashtag 0001. Uh, yeah. And if you got questions, you know, before then, don't be afraid. Just drop me a note on our Discord server. And yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Because I know somebody was talking about publishers early to meet with. And if you do, if, if you're in that situation where you're in the last minute of the show and you haven't, especially if you go to the meet and sign up for Meet to Match, then I will actually help you. Hit me up on Discord. I will actually help you find the companies that you need to meet with in that system. Because I know that system very, very well. All right. Are we going to do this again Friday, Andy? Uh, sure, let's do it Friday, if you want All to. Right, we'll, do, we'll do another one of these shows Friday.